Greetings, math people. Uh, today we're looking at eigenvalues and eigenvectors again. A beautiful topic in linear algebra. Uh, today it is a part two video of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Uh, we're going to be concentrating on matrices that are of order two. So we're going to be looking at uh, two by two matrices and seeing some some easier ways of finding the characteristic equation. So we'll start off uh, finding the characteristic equation in the same manner in which we found it in the part one video. And then we'll talk about uh, some ways we can find that characteristic equation quicker and more efficiently, uh, particularly for a two by two matrices. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so you can see here, I have a, a two by two matrix. And let's call this matrix A. And let's go ahead and go about the process of finding the characteristic equation uh, in the same manner in which we found it in the part one video. And so to remind you of that method, the first thing we did is we took the determinant of lambda I minus A and set that determinant equal to zero. Uh, that particular process gave us something called uh, the characteristic equation. And so let's look at how that works for this particular problem. So uh, lambda times I minus A would give us uh, negative 3 minus lambda minus 10 minus 5 lambda minus 2. And we'll take the determinant of said matrix and set it equal to 0. And now when we find the determinant of that particular matrix, uh, what will happen is uh, this is lambda plus three, I'm sorry, lambda plus three here. I did A minus uh, lambda I instead of lambda I minus A. So this guy right here should be lambda plus three. Uh, please forgive me. All right, so let's go ahead and do the process. And so if we multiply, if we find the determinant, that'll be lambda squared plus lambda minus 6 minus 50 equals to 0. And then, of course, if we just, you know, combine these two terms here, it will be lambda squared plus lambda minus 56 equals 0. And so this guy here is the characteristic equation. Uh, you can easily see from here that our eigenvalues will be negative 8 and 7. So those would be our eigenvalues. So let's go ahead and look at the process of finding uh, an eigenvector. We'll find an eigenvector for lambda 1, uh, which is negative 8. So let's just let's uh, review that process of finding um, uh, the eigenvector, and that process is we're going to do lambda 1 i minus a times a vector x uh, and set it equal to 0. So again, uh, lambda 1 is negative 8, and so when we do lambda 1 i minus a, uh, we'll get uh, negative 8 minus negative 3, so that'll be negative 5 and then negative 10, and then negative 5, and then negative 8 minus 2, and then negative 10. That matrix times the vector x with components x1, x2 should give us the 0 vector, 0, 0. All right, so you can see both rows are absolutely the same, so all I have to do is really concentrate on you know, just one row uh, to get the eigenvector, to get an eigenvector. So um, let's say you do the first row, which would be negative 5x1 minus 10x2 equals 0. And if we solve this, we'll get x1 equals negative 2x2. And if we select an eigenvector uh, satisfying that particular relationship, uh, one eigenvector could be the uh, 4, negative 2. So you can clearly see 4, negative 2 satisfies this relationship. Uh, x2 is negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, and x1 is 4. So let's go ahead and test uh, 
the identity we have for eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And that identity is that is that a times x should equal lambda times x. So again, the vector a was negative 3, 10, 5, 2. And in this case, that's lambda 1. And our x, our eigenvector is 4, negative 2. And just a reminder, lambda 1 is negative 8. So if this holds, negative 8 times x would be negative 32, 16. So when we do this multiplication, a times x, uh, we should get uh, negative 32, 16. So uh, let's see if we get that. So let's go ahead and do this. And so first we'll do negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Uh, negative 2 times 10, negative 20, negative 12, and negative 20 is negative 32. First number worked out fine. Let's see if we get 16 for the second number. First we'll do 5 times 4, which is 20. And 2 times negative 4, excuse me, 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4. 20 and negative 4 is indeed 16. So the identity of the eigen, the eigenvector and eigenvalue did indeed hold. Now, that's the whole process. And I want to look at a different way of finding uh, the characteristic equation, uh, a method of finding the characteristic equation, which you may find uh, more efficient and more easily done. And to do this, I'm going to introduce, well, not introduce, I'm going to look at two uh, matrix calculations. Uh, one is the trace of the matrix, and the other is the determinant of the matrix. So this is the matrix A. So this is the matrix at hand. And I want to find the trace of A. And the trace of the matrix, all you do is sum the entries of the main diagonal. So the trace of A is simply 3 uh, plus 2, excuse me, negative 3 plus 2, which is negative 1. I'm also going to find the determinant of A. The determinant of, of a 2 by 2 matrix is the product of the main diagonal minus uh, the product of the other two numbers. So that would be negative 6 minus 50, negative 56. So there is the trace and the determinant of that matrix. And I want to go back and remind you what our characteristic equation was. Our characteristic equation was lambda squared plus lambda minus 56 equals 0. So you might see some familiar numbers. You might see that this number is the determinant and the coefficient of lambda is the opposite of the trace. Now, the question is, was that just something unique for this particular problem, or is this something that will always hold? So, uh, let's investigate. So, let's look at a generic uh Let's look at a generic matrix, matrix A. We'll give it real basic uh, entries, A, B, C, D. And we'll look at what happens when we find its trace, its determinant, and its characteristic equation, how they all relate. So, of course, the trace of A, just to sum it up, the, L, the entries of the main diagonal is A plus D. The determinant of A uh, we be, would be A, D, minus B, C. All right. Now let's look at finding the characteristic equation in a normal manner. In a normal manner uh, will be lambda I uh, minus A, and the determinant of that set equal to zero. So let's look at how that would look. So lambda I minus A uh, would be lambda minus A minus B minus C, lambda minus D, determinant of that guy, equals zero. And if we take that determinant, we'll have lambda squared and we'll have a negative a lambda and a negative d lambda. So that's a negative a plus d lambda. And that would be, oh, also uh, there would be a plus a d, excuse me. And then that would be minus b c. Now, if you look at this characteristic equation, uh, this guy would be the constant. And look, lo and behold, it's the same as the determinant of A. And 
the coefficient of lambda is the opposite of the trace. So it's the trace with a minus sign in front. So this shows that for what no matter what the matrix is, no matter what the two by two matrix is, we can find a characteristic equation by simply finding the trace and the determinant of the matrix, which could be a little bit quicker than setting the determinant of lambda i minus a equal to zero. So let's do another example and find the characteristic equation uh, by finding the trace and the determinant of the matrix and see if the flow is a little bit better than the traditional way. All right, so let's look at finding the characteristic equation and then the eigenvalues and eigenvectors with this new method. So say we're looking at the following matrix and I'll call this the matrix A and I'll find the trace of this matrix. The trace of this matrix is six, so it's just two plus four. I'll find the determinant of this matrix. The determinant of this matrix is eight minus three, which is five. So based on what we just said, the characteristic equation will be lambda squared minus six lambda plus five equals zero which means my two eigenvalues will be negative, excuse me, positive five and positive one. All right, so it seemed pretty efficient. We find those eigenvalues uh, uh, fairly quickly. So let's go ahead and find uh, an eigenvalue, excuse me, an eigenvector uh, for the eigenvalue of five. So for the eigenvalue of five, So again, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do a lambda 1i minus a times x equals 0. Reminder that lambda 1 is 5. And so we'll have 5 minus 2, which is 3, negative 3, negative 1, and 5 minus 4, uh, which is 1. And we'll multiply this uh, by the vector x with components x1, x2, and in hopes of getting a 0 vector. So again, hopefully you can see this is a singular uh, matrix here. Uh, this guy is just a multiple of this guy. And so we'll just look at uh, evaluating this based off the second row, and that would be negative x1 plus x2 equals 0, which means that x1 equals x2. So any matrix where x1 and x2 are the same should work. So let's use the matrix 7, 7. Uh, lucky 7, as they say. So let's test the identity. So let's see if uh, matrix A uh, times uh, this vector will give us five times this vector, uh, which should be uh, 35, 35. So again, matrix A is 2, 3, 1, 4. And we're going to multiply that by the vector 7, 7. And... If it satisfies the identity, uh, we should get 35, 35. So let's see what we get. 14, 21, 35. So far, so good. 7, 28, 35. So indeed, it worked. So this will conclude our second, uh, our part two video on eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And hopefully you saw in this particular video uh, easier way of finding the characteristic equation utilizing the trace and the determinant of the matrix. We'll see you next time. Specialized in science and math and original black men Busting thoughts that pierce your mental the fierce Ripping your saxon Vocal toe to toe impeccable Splitting your back son Simple as addition and subtraction Black thought the infinite relax one